don't, don't worry about it. You can put it in the lowest, the lowest setting because of the caption fee and everything. The, the ACT and H frameworks for vaccines, what is, uh, what can we say about that? Just that it's going to be important that everyone gets vaccines. No yeah. one is left behind like this. Yeah. Is like everything. So it is that WHO is working in framework, frameworks. Mm. ACT stands for? And today in the morning, the meeting with ambassadors was about that, huh? that I don't think. No, no, no. Oh. Okay, the ask mark to make sure he's muted because they, they say they can hear on YouTube. What? Just to ask mark to make sure he's muted the sound because they can hear sound on YouTube. Hello everyone, my name is Christopher Black and I work in the communications department of the World Health Organization here in Geneva. We're coming to you live from our headquarters here on December the 3rd, which is the International Day of Persons with Disabilities. I'm so lucky to be joined by our expert on this issue, Dr. Alarcos Cieza. Welcome Alarcos, thank you for joining us today. Very happy to be here. The theme for today's day is a day for all. I'm wondering if you could tell us a little bit about International Day of Persons with Disabilities, and what does this theme mean this year? Thank you. We have been using at WHO a, the International Day of Persons with Disabilities, a day for all, to really transmit to the world that when we talk about disability, it's not something that only is relevant and important for a few and for a group of people. Uh, but it is really le relevant to all of us, is to communicate to the world disability is a human experience. Disability is uh, something that comes in, in your life, goes out of your life sometimes, and sometimes stay with you for the rest of your life. And of course, we celebrate today, especially those who live permanently uh, with disability, but Disability will be an experience that is in our lives um, uh, to, to certain extent always. That is the reason why we use a day for all. Thank you so much. Could you give our viewers um, some information on how big a, a, an issue this is around the world? How many people yeah. are living with disability yeah. around the world right yeah. now? Thank you, Chris. Yeah, we, uh, our WHO estimates is that there is one billion people around the world who is living 
with some form of disability. That is also the reason why we don't, it, we don't say it, it, or that we say that it's a day for all because mm -hmm. affects so many people. We can think it's one out of seven who experience some form of disability. And what is also important to say is that everyone, um, what is also important to say is that what diverse group of people is this one billion people? And this diversity comes because of the health conditions and the impairments behind the disability, but also because of the environment in which we live that sometimes exacerbate, unfortunately, the experience of disability if there is barriers, if there is stereotypes, and certain negative attitudes uh, against disability. So it is a question not only of the health condition, the impairment behind, but also in how mm, the environment and the society re react to it. And disability is something that affects people around the world mm -hmm. and it affects people of all ages, is that correct? And affects people of all ages from children to older adults, and one could even say, and that is also the reason why we say is uh, disability is part of the human condition and uh, is relevant to all of us, because of course, when we age, everyone experiences or they start to experience, if not before, limitations in functioning, that is the disability that we experience. Very important to WHO is um, the work that we're doing towards health for all, for universal health mm -hmm. coverage for everyone. Do people living with disabilities receive the health care they need? That is the vision that anyone, including persons with disabilities, who need certain health services also receive them. And uh, that is also the reason why WHO promotes so intensively a person-centered care so that every single person is looked at with their health care needs and these health care needs are addressed. One have, however, to recognize that still in many countries of the world and in many settings, there are certain barriers um, that makes more difficult for some people with disability to access those health services. Sometimes, unfortunately, there is still facilities, for example, uh, healthcare facilities that uh, have only stairs and uh, not a ramp of elevator, and that is a challenge, for example, if you are a, well, a, a, will, um, a wheelchair user, or sometimes there is still some communications difficulties, for example, in, in cases when the person uh, uh, is, has a hearing impairment and depends on sign language, is no one in, if no one in the healthcare center or in the hospital uh, can speak uh, um, a sign language. So it's still there's this kind of barriers, environmental barriers, that needs to be, need to be overcome in many parts and settings uh, from the world. And also, but the most important one, I think that is something that has to do with all of us and for which all of us really without distinction can do something about is our attitudes toward disability. And again, emphasizing the message is part of the human conditions, is part of our lives in and out and sometimes all the time. And uh, therefore we need to look at the person because of the person is beyond and above whether this person has disability or not. And our attitudes can change a lot. Indeed, in fact, it's a human rights issue, isn't it? Is there, can you talk a little bit about the work WHO has done on that side of things? Yeah, of course. Thank you. Yeah. It's indeed, we always say at WHO that uh, disability is uh, a public health issue because of the large number of people who live with some form of disability is also a human rights issue, at Chris, as Chris said, and is also a development issue. Let me go to the issue of human rights. And uh, we have also a convention, a convention on the rights of persons with disabilities that was endorsed, uh, by, uh, that was endorsed in 2006. And uh, this convention look 
that, or they make sure that uh, persons with disabilities are able to participate in society on an equal, equal basis with others. One of the aspects that this convention concentrate on is on health and health services and access to health services. And also another one is access to, to par as part of health services, rehabilitation services. So what WHO is doing work on is making sure that we promote and that we work with countries to identify those barriers to access to healthcare services so that they can be addressed exactly the same like the barriers towards accessing rehabilitation services for persons with disabilities. You allow me, I go briefly the to yours. the issue because that is the, in terms of the human rights perspective, these are the two main topics of WHO, access to health services and access to rehabilitation, uh, including rehabilitation services. And um, when we say that uh, disability is also a development issue is because still we have to recognize that uh, in uh, low-income settings and low-income countries, the requirements and needs of persons with disabilities are less addressed than in other parts of the world. So that persons with disabilities also are living uh, in, uh, in, in low or the, with, uh, in, in situation of poverty much more frequently than persons without disabilities. So when we address the agenda of development, we need also to look at it from, a lenses, from the lenses of disability. Thank you so much, Dr. Alarcos. So as I mentioned a few minutes ago, this is a Social Media Live on the 3rd of December for International Day of Persons with Disability with WHO expert Dr. Alarcos. Uh, so thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, if you have any questions, we would love to hear your questions, your comments, your ideas, your stories uh, about on this issue. That would be great. Just put them in the uh, comments box if you're watching on Facebook and LinkedIn. If you're on Twitter, just uh, you, can, you can hit us up with the hashtag AskWHO. Um, an issue on many people's minds, of course, around the world is the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, how are people with disabilities particularly affected during this period. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, Chris. And uh, it is indeed the case that we recognize at WHO that persons with disabilities are put in a vulnerable situation in a uh, public health crisis like COVID-19. And there are two main issues that we need to look at. And one is ac access to uh, those public health interventions to prevent getting the disease to prevent getting COVID-19. And then another big issue is access to health services, as we have been discussing. Once you get the disease and that you get the services as soon as possible because persons with disabilities are frequently also related to potentially the underlying condition then develop severe cases of COVID-19. So we always uh, promote uh, actually two things that persons with disabilities can themselves always need to have um, management strategies so that those, they adhere, adhere very strictly to the, those preventive strategies as measures like, uh, for example, uh, hand washing or keeping the, the physical distancing. And, uh, and of course, that if this is not possible, that the strategies are put in place and planned so that these key public health measures can be, can be maintained. We also, in order to address this, is what, uh, what we promote in countries and we collaborate also with countries, is to uh, provide advice of what are um, strategies based on which one can facilitate, for example, the distribution of uh, information that is accessible for everyone uh, in terms of preventing strategies. And as I said before, in the on the side of access health services, 
Again, we provide also advice and strategies from the perspective of governance, from the perspective of managers of health facilities, also from the perspective of health professionals to be sensitive to the requirements and the needs of persons with disabilities. We can post on the chat box uh, one of our uh, mm, considerations for COVID-19 for persons with disabilities that were published very early in the, in the, pan and in the uh, pandemic and that uh, provide all this relevant information. In terms of isolation, yeah. people who are already having problems accessing health services, accessing community services, is there any more, is, is that an important issue in terms of mental health and isolation yeah. of people with disabilities during this period? That is for sure a very key and fundamental issue. And also because we have to take into consideration that very often those strategies that have been put in place, for example, of, of reaching out uh, through uh, media and, uh, and um, strategies of involving the public so that everyone is, comment, uh, is, uh, is involved. This public event that has been organized during the pandemic so to engage people, to facilitate people, very often are not, are not really accessible to persons with disabilities. So we need always to pay attention to the issue of accessibility and that contributes also to, to, more, uh, to more isolation. So what we always recommend is that in countries, in communities, organizations of persons with disabilities are usually very well connected and organized. And they also know of very good strategies at the local level that promote really the engagement of persons with disabilities with the outside world, to reach out, to, s to know where, where help can be, can be seek, where accessible help can be can be six and also creating a sense of community between persons with disabilities but also uh, beyond in order to contribute to really combat this isolation that is very often acuter or the more more prominent in persons with disabilities thank you doctor and thank you everyone for your questions they're really coming in fast and furious and we appreciate that very much don't hesitate to tell us where you're watching from. That's always interesting as well to know that we're really reaching out to people around the world on this very important issue, which, as Dr. Larcos has mentioned, really it does touch people around the world. Um, one question we often get during our Facebook Live and other social media lives is why are we not wearing masks? This is a question that comes up very often. Mm -hmm. um, and the answer that we'd like to give is that we are not wearing masks because we're physically distanced. We are more than mm -hmm. two meters apart, which is, which is protection in itself. We're in a large room here in the beautiful executive boardroom of WHO headquarters in Geneva. We have thermo scanners in the building when we come in, so, and there's excellent ventilation in this room. So there's all these reasons why we don't wear masks during these live events. So let's get to your questions. We have Anita Karki on Facebook, who's asking, Doctor, what conditions does WHO consider disability? Can we do go into a few details about things that people maybe no, and there may be some, some issues mm -hmm. that people don't know that yeah. we consider this. Yeah, thing. great, thank you. Actually, uh, and thank you, Anita, for asking this question. It is absolutely fundamental because from a WHO perspective, you know, the experience of disability can be associated to any health condition. Very often, people think automatically of vision impairment, hearing impairment, or for example, some uh, injuries where it is uh, a spinal cord injury because then you, you in, the, in most of the cases, you will have to use a, a wheelchair. But actually, from the perspective of WHO, any health condition that has associated limitations in functioning is, uh, is, uh, is a condition that is considered uh, associated to disability. That can be epilepsy, that can be uh, depression, that can be, of course, conditions like uh, cerebral palsy in, uh, in children and also in, in adults, and uh, can be rheumatoid arthritis. Sometimes when I talk here with colleagues uh, at the World Health Organization that have 
um, rheumatoid arthritis, they can tell you stories about how, how profound is the disability that they also experience, how long does it take, for example, to get out, uh, out of bed. So it is from the perspective of WHO, the disability experience can be associated to any, any health condition. And this experience can be aggregated profoundly, profoundly, as we have said before, if there is barriers in the environment, if there is physical barriers, and most importantly, attitudinal barriers towards disability. And these are the ones that we need always to fight. The attitudinals, all of us can do something about it, and also the environment, the physical barriers that needs another kind of approaches, but also are doable. Thank you so much. Um, we have a question from LinkedIn. Thank you, LinkedIn users. Uh, mainstreaming disability is, a, is an important step. Um, for example, they're th also talking about uh, concrete things that can be done. Um, mm -hmm. For example, hand washing stations, how they can be accessed by people with disabilities. This is related to COVID. I remember when we had a previous uh, social media live on disability, we were talking about the issues that wheelchair users face in terms of mm -hmm. hand hygiene. Yeah. They're using their hands all the time. Um, can we talk a little bit about that, mainstreaming um, disability? Yeah, mainstreaming disability actually means whatever you do and whatever we do in public health, whatever we do in education, whatever we do in, uh, in, in any, and, and actually from the perspective of WHO, from the perspective of health, whatever we do, it needs to have always a disability angle. I would like also to give an, a very nice example that uh, we recently had. WHO launched uh, guidelines for physical activity. How long we as human beings should be uh, physically active to maintain and to promote our health. And we have in these guidelines also a disability angle where we say, okay, for there is also certain recommendations, particularly this time, that uh, need to be, uh, need, is appropriate for people who have a disability or are experiencing certain uh, limitations. So in this case, it would be really about whatever we do, whatever implement, and also that is what we promote at WHO, whatever program, health program it is, we can always look to the disability from a disability ang angle. Are there specific requirements that need to be taken into consideration there? And uh, in the case of COVID-19, as uh, Chris, uh, you have already said, we always recommend think that uh, if we promote uh, hand washing, hand washing need to be possible for anyone. There is always certain strategies that if someone has difficult, that if we implement uh, public, uh, public stations for hand washing, there are certain people potentially with mobility, uh, mobility issues that need also to access those facilities. And perhaps it is about putting certain facilities lower or potentially also with uh, voice messages so that people who have a, a, a vision impairment also get the information on how to use it. And there is also always certain accommodations that need to be done in order to promote uh, a mainstream in disability in whatever we do. Thank you so much, Doctor. Uh, again, just to mention, we're coming to you live from Geneva on a very important social media live event. Thank you so much for joining us, International Day of Persons with Disabilities. You touched on it briefly there, and it made me think about technology. Mm -hmm. So um, one thing I'd like to give a little shout out to our captioners who are helping on this show today and who help at all our press conference events and many events that WHO do. Alison and Lisa, we really appreciate yeah. the work that you do on all these events, helping to make our social media products a little bit more accessible. Much more that we could do, but this is a start. Um, could you give us a few examples of technology, high tech mm -hmm. and low tech, that are making a difference right now in people's lives? Yeah, thank you. Actually, there is uh, a plenty of technologies. For example, if you have a, a um, vision impairment, you, you, you are depending on a screen reader. So the, the important thing is that the documents that are created have certain requirements fulfilled so that if a person has a vision impairment, then instead to read the document can hear 
what it is written in, the, in this document. That is a an screen, an screen reader. Of course, other, um, other technologies that uh, we are very used uh, use today with uh, our mobile with our mobile phones again uh, mobile phones again they are always applications that uh, allow to read the message or the, that read the the content of the web pages that for example we uh, we uh, we want to to read in uh, in our devices and um, what else? How what about else some low-tech low solutions that, um, that make a difference in people's lives? Actually, low-tech solutions, you know, if we talk of assistive technology is, uh, you know, a cane is an assistive product mm -hmm. that can have a life-changing effect in, in someone with a, with a vision impairment and learning to, to use mm -hmm. this, uh, this cane to, to move around can be like changing and fundamental. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are other technologies like if you have a hearing impairment, hearing aids, it's, uh, it's fundamental to, to really promote the use of, uh, of hearing aids. And we need to also to recognize that there is quite a lot of a stigma uh, towards uh, hearing aids that many people who have hearing impairment do not want to, to use them because it's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's it's like, uh, or the it is interpreted that is is exposing one uh, impairment limitation that I have, and actually it should not be the case. Again, hearing impairment can be accommodated. There are solutions for it, and uh, as we mentioned, disability is part of the human condition. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, everyone who who needs a hearing aid should be perceived and. Uh, as uh, a normality, exactly the same as uh, the person uh, using the, the, hearing, the hearing aid. And then it also goes back to your point about accessibility and people of all ages, technology are, um, that, that are adapted to people throughout the life course. So a wheelchair user needs many wheelchairs over their life course, an orthopedics person might need exactly, different um, exactly. help yeah. over their life course. It's exactly, very and, and actually to today we are also launching our colleagues of assistive technology they are also launching new products on the use of uh, wheelchairs because one of the important things also with wheelchairs is uh, uh, of course how you use them, how you learn also to maintain them and uh, how you make sure that they uh, have ad accommodate to your body and also last uh, as long as it is uh, possible mm -hmm. with you. Yeah. Definitely. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for your questions. Let's go to one from Facebook, an interesting one about the caregivers. So what, it, what um, work has WHO done in terms of support to caregivers and families um, in order to, to give help to people with dis persons with disabilities? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for this fundamental, fundamental question. Uh, and uh, very often, the caregivers are the ones that uh, really um, uh, address many of the requirements and the needs of persons with disabilities and sometimes they are uh, the ones that are, are uh, forgotten. And actually what we do at WHO is, uh, is also um, provide recommendations in terms of making sure that caregivers are not forgotten in the conversation when uh, we discuss the topic uh, of disability. And, um, and uh, uh, again, that, uh, that they are part of the conversation and that they are not forgotten. Definitely. Thank you, Doctor. Um, so again, we are live from Geneva on International Day of Persons with Disabilities. There's another question from Facebook talking about attitudes towards disability. Mm -hmm. What kind of attitudes need to change? So on this important day, what would we like to highlight to people, the, the change that we'd like to see around the world? Yeah. Actually, that uh, disability defines the person. And I think that is, is, uh, is, 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 is that disability defines the person. The person has uh, many, or that I, w we need to look at the persons and people independent and beyond their 
their disability. And I think that is something that needs to be changed, that the disability does not uh, define, uh, define the person. And that is looked at as part of human diversity. We all are different, and that being different is also what uh, uh, make us rich as uh, human beings. And uh, in uh, instead of looking at it as something that is, and I say in quotation marks, abnormal, that is really part of human diversity and uh, belong to the normality of being human. Indeed. Thank you, Doctor. Um, on Facebook, again, we have a question from Mohammed Jahangir and is on rehabilitations, and it's an issue that we were talking about yesterday mm -hmm. with the launch of the report on rehabilitation. Um, what, at the community level, what kind of support is WHO providing to countries to integrate rehabilitation into health systems? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mohammed. Uh, rehabilitation is very, very close to our hearts. And uh, look, yesterday we launched the, um, for the first time, estimates on the need for rehabilitation worldwide. And we were saying that 2.4 billion people have a health condition that could benefit from rehabilitation. And we were also saying the need for rehabilitation is so huge. And also the needs can be addressed at community level and local level. For that reason, it is important to emphasize that rehabilitation needs to be integrated at secondary, at primary, and community level, and not only in that facilities, tertiary level facilities, as is frequently the case in, in many countries. And uh, we have very concrete uh, uh, guidance and recommendations on uh, how to uh, bring rehabilitation down at the lo local level, at the community level. Uh, we can also post in, uh, in the chat box, and there are colleagues that are looking uh, also that we will post that, what are those recommendations and those guidance from WHO. Thank you so much. So thank you colleagues who are helping us behind the scenes on this uh, show today. Um, we have another question from Facebook from Katerina Watts. Uh, she's wondering, going back to, going to the, about COVID, um, how can we increase interaction with people with, living with disabilities during these times, when people are separated from their families, when people can't can access communities as much, what can, what can be done? Actually, it can be done the same that we do uh, with everyone else, reach out. Uh, reach out to those who you know, and especially sometimes, as we were discussing before, sometimes uh, the fact that uh, uh, one, someone is a person with disability and potentially wants to prevent by all means uh, to uh, get COVID-19, then uh, even the measures are more restrictive than uh, for the rest of the, of the population. So one have really to reach out as much as, as, much as possible and find ways to either, if the, the, the persons have uh, uh, computers, reach out of, uh, uh, through computers and organize meetings, family gatherings, uh, friends gatherings, exactly the same like we all are doing, not differently, only that we need to ask the extra, the, the, the additional question, is there something needed so that this person, that is the person experiencing disability, can be part of this party, can be part of this gathering? Is there that needs to be any barrier that needs to be addressed, whether it is uh, because a tool, an electronic tool is needed, uh, for example, like a screen reader or, the, or it is um, uh, uh, any, any kind of, um, of other potential uh, barriers that, uh, that, could, um, that could exist. So this extra, extra question is, is, is what needs to be addressed. Otherwise, it is as anyone else, reach out. And, uh, and include include everyone that you know also with disability. Thank you, Doctor. That's a very important message. Um, if we're looking at um, number, the figures around the world, mm -hmm. um, as people are living longer, um, populations are aging, uh, populations are growing. Is, do we see the number of disability going up linked to that? 
Definitely, uh, we, are, we are seeing that also due to the uh, aging population, also inc the increased number of people living with, uh, with uh, what we call non-communicable diseases, that uh, is uh, increased number of chronic conditions, of people living with chronic conditions, then the number of people with disabilities is also increasing. Also, the number of people experiencing disability associated to mental health conditions. So I think that is a trend that uh, we are observing. Again, what gives us the message, disability is part of the human experience, is part of us, and uh, we need to change the attitude towards, towards it. Indeed, indeed. Pardona. Thank you so much. Um, we have... Uh, an excellent question from Jitendra Gunti. Thank you, Jitendra, for your question. On a specific issue, epilepsy. Is epilepsy a disability according to WHO? Mm -hmm. Jitendra, thank you for this question. And let me reiterate uh, what, uh, what I also mentioned uh, before. For WHO, any health conditions that has associated to certain limitations and difficulties of everyday life or the, it has associated the, the um, restrictions of, for example, participate in education, participate in, uh, in, uh, w in the work, uh, participate in family gathering. So any conditions can have associated disability. For that reason, of course, epilepsy is one of the conditions that uh, can have associated uh, high degrees of disability. Indeed. So again, we're coming to you live from Geneva for International Day of Persons with Disability 2020, during an extremely difficult year for everyone mm -hmm. around the world, 2020. Uh, we're talking about disability, we're talking about health for all, we're talking about human rights, and we're talking about COVID-19. Um, in terms of um, rights, if we look at employment, um, are people with disability affected more or less um, in terms of unemployment and issues no. around employment? No. What we can say is that uh, people with disabilities, uh, or that in the workplace, there are very frequently barriers that uh, um, make more difficult for people with disabilities to be employed. And uh, this is an issue that uh, that need to be addressed also to make our workplaces much more inclusive. And uh, actually from our perspective, from the perspective of WHO, I have good news uh, of something that we have launched uh, today on the International Day of Persons with Disabilities. For the first time, WHO launched uh, a WHO policy on disability exactly mm -hmm. to address that, to make sure that we as an organization become an inclusive organization in which persons with disabilities can uh, flourish and participate in work life as, uh, as anyone else. And I think these kind of actions need to be done in any kind of uh, work, um, um, uh, work facility, whatever it is, whether it is private sector, it's an international organization, or that it is uh, whatever, uh, uh, whatever the, employ the employer is, uh, because still, again, there is certain physical barriers and there are certain attitudinal barriers that need to be explicitly tackled and addressed so that uh, persons with disabilities never are in disadvantage and also at the workplace, not in disadvantage. Indeed. Uh, we're getting a lot of questions on rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. um, so one is, how is WHO supporting rehabilitation professionals with training and integration with other health professionals? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chris. And um, actually, we are doing a lot of work on, uh, on rehabilitation uh, workforce and working in countries to with uh, ministries of health and with the relevant ministries and sometimes also with the ministries of education in order to, um, to uh, plan to do a good work, uh, uh, workforce planning and education planning for rehabilitation workforce 
uh, so that the workforce is further developed according to the need of rehabilitation, that there is not many more people needing rehabilitation with few workforce being able to address those needs, but really increase the number of, uh, of people working on rehabilitation. And we have also very concrete guidance and standards for that. And uh, for all of you that are uh, interested on that, we will be launching in a couple of weeks a couple of relevant uh, um, products and guidance in that direction that can be used then in countries to make sure that the rehabilitation workforce is strengthened. Thank you. And so I can assume people can find more information on our website, so www.who.int to learn more about that. Um, thank you everyone who's asked questions, who's told us stories, who's joined us today from around the world. The list is long. We're gonna go through a few countries here, Iraq, Mozambique, India, South Africa, Rwanda, Canada, where I'm from, USA, Cameroon, Ethiopia, Thailand, Myanmar, Ghana, Kenya, Yemen, Syria, Iran, Bangladesh, Turkey, Mexico, Indonesia, Sri Lanka, South Sudan, Chad, Nigeria, Germany, Pakistan, Tanzania, Netherlands, Morocco, Peru, Spain, uh, what else, Colombia, Germany, France, Sweden, Bangladesh, did I say Bangladesh? I said it twice. Philippines, Indonesia, Morocco, USA, Brazil, Nepal, Pakistan, and uh, we'll get to a few last questions that are just coming in. Um, let's see. Oh, no, we already, actually, we already <laughs> touched on that one. So instead, I'm going to ask you, Dr. Alarcos, your key message today, International Day of Persons with Disability 2020, what would you like our viewers to yeah. think about today? I would like to give the message, uh, embrace disability as part of the human condition. And... Uh, yeah, embrace disability is a day for all, celebrate it. And uh, you, ha you know someone that uh, is, um, is, is a person with disability, reach out and celebrate with that person and embrace it as part of your life, as part of uh, the life or the of being human, that is all. Thank you so much. And thank you so much to everyone for joining us today. Uh, we hope you can join us again on another occasion for a Social Media Live product from WHO. Until then, thank you and uh, share this and so more people can see it on this important day. Thank you, Dr. Larcos. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was good. Uh,